it's it, the the writing is actually fine it's the, the the way they display the writing is really annoying it's kind of uh, cr like crazy to me that you can make a game that's like purely text driven and and not display the text in like primarily it's it's just crazy i don't know i don't get it um so was i correct in oh yeah okay so i tried to do this right and then i i died and now i have to set up the new cards how wonky russian youtube is right now jesus So I got new cards from, yeah, Book of Pamela, Book of Pamela, Book of Oscar. Did I, 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 I guess I burned these cards. Let me, let's burn these cards. I don't even see the cards, the, the emojis anymore. I just see blondes, brunettes, redheads. What is that emoji? That looks really strange. Okay. So I think I got everything from it. Uh, no, it looks like I actually... Well, okay, the, the, the pages I get are like infinite, right? But we'll burn a few more. Burn John Bloodborne's book. What, was that not Oscar? I can't remember which one was John Bloodborne. Oh. I guess it was Book of Yuna or Book of Salvador. <sighs> Equip nutsack floor. Cool, I get to die a few times to the Abno on, on Netsack. And I have to now spend a bunch of time setting these guys up to be, like, uh, set up. So what's their deal? Uh, what, what is the deal with Netsacks for? What, what is their deal? Hold on. Stagger damage. Stagger. Uh, stagger and pierce. Seems to me that they work very... They work effectively with um, status effects. So I'm guessing stagger and status effects in general. A quick equip with primarily pierce cards and passives that include pierce stagger. Okay. We can't do Hanafuda because Hanafuda is a discard. Oscar is John Bloodborne. Upon taking a lethal blow, reduce all incoming damage, including what activated this passive by 25 for the scene. Okay. Okay, so here's um, Pamela. Pamela's page seems to be Pierce. So I think we probably want to add Pamela's page to all of all of these lads. And then there's Jolting Puncture, which I'm sure we're going to want to add the passive for. Pamela. Pamela. Okay, so Jolting Puncture. And we'll figure out the rest later, or in a second. But I'm just going to add Pamela to all of them. I think I can do all of them. Use Bloodborne Dude for Netzek. 
Really? Okay. It doesn't seem to be very uh, stagger or pierce synergistic. Oh, is that... Are we good there? Passives in use. It seems like he has now piercer and jolting puncture and wedge. Did I do that somehow? I don't know how I added that in there, but it seems like I did. Okay. Yep, they're all in there. Okay, so we're good with Neville. We're not good with Daniel. Daniel needs jolting puncture. Okay. Perfect. You just didn't read far enough. Oh, Bloodborne. John Bloodborne always had them. Okay, I, I assumed he only had speed and unrelenting. All right, so they're good for key pages. So now I just have to add a bunch of cards to their combat pages. So we're going to do Pierce. Um, we can do Stagger as well, but I find adding too many uh, keywords. Oh, actually, no, we can't do Stagger. Can we do Stagger? It doesn't seem like there is Stagger as an option. So we'll just do Pierce for now, and then I'll have to look through them. Let's look at the bottom ones first. Inflict Bleed. Boost Pierce Dice Power by plus two for this scene. Boost next. Okay, so this seems like a really good one. Um, This is a Restore One Light. Restore One Light. That's on Clash Win, so that's not necessarily a good one. Um, boost next dies max value by plus three. Kind of like the stab and detonate. Free passive space equals wasted space and your disadvantage. Okay. I'm cool with that. Inflict paralysis. Reduce power of target target's current die. Looking for anything with stagger. Discard. Inflict bleed. Paralysis. Boost pierce dice. Power by plus one for the scene. Uh, this seems really good and it also restores light. Is there any reason I shouldn't put a few of these in there? Um, this one seems okay too, but it's a uh, on clash restore light, but it's only plus it's only one to four damage So maybe not great Draw a page upon discarding this page discard a page with no we, we don't want to do discard endurance I mean i'm sorting by stagger right now Unless you want me to st sort by the latest stage so that they're the the current Tier. When discarded, gain one haste. Uh, on clash, win restore one light. I don't. I don't think this one's good. Boost pierce dice power. I'm gonna add another one of those. That just seems like a very good one. Um. <sighs> Feast. Is whatever. Deal five damage to target. I mean, Transpierce seems good, but it's also three costs. So I think I want to add some uh, high, like one high speed stabbing. On inf on hit, inflict one paralysis next scene. What I want is high, uh, high pierce. On use, draw one page. This seems like a good one. Hey, Prime Games, how you doing? I can give you a quick build for for Oscar if you want. Uh, let me just struggle along with this. Boost next uh, dies. 
we have um we have a three like restore one light but these basically only pay for themselves i i understand that um not really seeing a lot of things that restore light in any kind of meaningful way reduce power of target targets current die by one uh, I, I imagine that one's not very helpful on clash win inflict one paralysis we could do like one of those this is too high cost now right like right now i don't know i don't know like this this seems probably bad i i acknowledge that this is bad but I don't know really how to fix it. Let's just like try the previous tier. Okay, here we go. On use, restore one light. But this is only two to three. But this refine also uh, improves um, pierce dice power. So it seems to me what I want to do is I'm going to keep zap. I'm going to remove one mend weapon. And I'm going to add three refine. Um, this could work. Kind of want to just add another mend weapon. So the logic here, here's my logic is um we use mend weapon to kind of restore our light to kind of like maintain ourselves um this will also be boost pierce dice so that uh our high speed stabbing is actually doing anything the high speed stabbing is when we can't do anything else um actually i wouldn't mind having that that other one again was it zap no it wasn't zap there was one that let us draw a card which one let us draw? There was one that let us draw, and I want that one. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I, I think mm, collision seems pretty good, but I don't, I don't know. It would only re like basically pay for itself. Ah, uh, here we go. On use draw. So the uh, the 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 idea here is that we use men weapon to improve um, pierce damage. And that way high speed stabbing actually does anything and then we're just holding out so that we can use refine and then refine will also uh boost our pierce damage so that high speed stabbing does more so this is like you know and then we use sparking spear when we've run out of pages um this is a probably not great build but i'm gonna try it Net Zach, I don't know how to spell his name. Net Zach uh, Pierce. And then we're gonna throw slap this on everyone. Let's let's add one more passive. Um I want something that costs uh, costs one. Inflict paralysis to three random enemies. That sounds like a good one. and um yes wait a minute what D what do i have two left okay hold on a second i guess okay i've only used one okay hold on a second um we don't have any more do we have any more pierce Pierce damage. Well, that's not what we want. Here we go. Piercing prowess of a grade 8 fixer. So that's going to help slightly. And then 50% chance to boost pierce damage by a plus 1. So that'll help as well. Okay, so now we have 3 left and we can just like add some random stuff.
still recommend having two weight up. Okay, well, I'll have a look at, I'll have a wait, a look at weight up in a second. Um... Hold on, uh, Pierce. Sorry, I, I'm getting very atrophied by this. We just want, I just want something that costs three. Gain two power for the first scene. If three or few pages are in hand at the end of the scene, gain one strength next scene. That's, that sounds fine. There we go. Um, and then we'll do Daniel. Netsack is done, right? We can't add anything to him. That's right. Daniel, you need some stuff. So let's look at Pierce again so we can find those other ones. Um, grade 8 Fixer and Lulu's pay friend. Bomb, bomb. And then we'll add uh, just like a random 3 cost. Uh, if three or few, no, that's fine. Um, gain plus two power for the first scene. I don't like that. At the end of each scene, gain three strength if no other allies are present. When inflicting burn using combat pages, no, that's not what we want. Um, nope. Gain plus two power. All right, I guess, I don't know. We'll do this again in times like these. That's fine. Hey, twin. Yeah, you haven't missed anything. Okay, so I'm a 10, you're suggesting one weight up. Okay, you're you're suggesting one weight up. Okay. You know what? I understand the value in that. Because that's the the whole strategy here is to use bad cards and then buff them with the other cards. And this restores one light, so I, I I see the value in that. So let's go ahead and save this under Netsack Pierce. And then we're going to go ahead and load. And import this on all of them. Okay, so we should be good. We building up Netsy's floor for, it looks like, yes we are. Flower. Okay, so what do we got? Thorns granting happiness on hit give the target two positive emotion coins. Add two copies of pleasure to target's hand. Uh, add a copy of pleasure to target's hand. Add a copy of pleasure to target's hand. Okay. Take no fluttering is take no damage from ranged page, pages. Uh, unbearable pleasure at the start of each scene character restore characters restore one light for each of pleasure in their hand on hit if the target has three pages of pleasure deal 20 damage and exhaust those pages so we want to use uh pleasure if we possibly can i'm going to use refine right away so we can boost our piercing damage i'm going to do this for as many people as i can And we'll also use Wait Up to restore some light. Wow. Wow, we actually did literally any damage. Nice. Uh, on a successful Pierce attack, reduce the max stagger resist of the target by 5%. Deal 5 to 10 stagger damage to all enemies. No, this one seems like much better. We'll add it to net sack. Wow, look at all the light they have right now. So now we, we have to use pleasure. We do not want to end up with those in our hand. Um, and we'll do mend weapon to uh, recover some light, but also do a little bit of damage. Uh, we can do We can do that with everyone, actually. Um, except for Neville. Neville, you can refine. That's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. Not n nice. It's 
<laughs> Nancy is beating his opioid addiction. Jesus. We gotta, we gotta use these up if we can. Or at least not, make sure we don't end up with three of them. We're gonna continue to refine so we do more damage. They only have one pleasure in their hand, so yeah, we're, we're okay there. All right, this is going very well. I am refined. Look at that beautiful gleaming dome of mine. <laughs> um, deal five to send dagger. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, we're done. Did we oh, we, we staggered them. Nice. So we'll do... Oh, we can't do a refine, but we should be doing really nice damage because I've been doing plenty of refines. Actually, uh, rather than do one attack, let's do two for five. And you know what? Let's use a pleasure because it actually does pretty decent damage. Done. This abnormality is why some some call this floor the hee hee floor. We have new emojis. I started watching SCP stuff on YouTube. Really reminds me of the Lobotomy Corp stuff. Well, I, absolutely Lobotomy Corp is uh, influenced by SCP. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, Library of Ruina as well. You don't reek of alcohol today. What's up? Because I didn't drink. I just want to stay sober today. Uh, what's gotten in you? You look pretty sad to miss out on a chance to drink. Whoops, was it that noticeable? Well, today's a special day. A day I died and perished from this world. Really? What's the date again? It's hard to keep track of time staying here. The date doesn't really matter. It's this exact moment I'm commemorating. I learned all about the life and death of Giovanni and my first incarnation. That's what you meant, huh? Did you, do you think the followers of the Church of Gears are a bunch of fools, Roland? You mean how they're so desperate to find meaning in their lives, going so far as to join a cult? Uh, I don't think they're stupid, they're just pitiful. That's what I think too. I grew up without anyone to call parents. Same here, I was raised by my grandma, had a rough childhood. I was born in a nest and got left in an orphanage without even knowing who my parents were, yo. I always forget it, but content warning. <laughs> I really need to make a note for myself. Sticky note on my forehead. I'd have died already if it was for the back. Uh, if it was for the back streets. I was lucky to be born in a nest and unlucky to have lost my parents so early. What nest was it? K Corps. That's one of the more decent ones I've heard. Yep, my life was pretty smooth. Slightly more unfortunate than others, uh, and slightly luckier than others. I never really uh, starved or got bullied by anyone. It was a sheltered life, free from any outside influence. All I did was breathe in that shelter without meaning. I thought it was the natural thing to do. Everyone else had the same expression as mine. In the school or on the streets, all the people in the nest made the same face. Lost focus. Spacing out and staring into empty places. Yep, you're spot on. I figured life just comes and goes. I kept living a monotonous life until I met someone with a face I'd never seen before. I'm guessing you met your first love, I suppose. It was Giovanni's first love, to be exact. She was giving a passionate speech in the middle of the street, even though no one paid attention to her. I barely understood what she was saying, actually. All I could think about was how brilliant and alive a person could be. Love at first sight, huh? She went on about how she'll change the world and its people. And she was looking for recruits to join her cause. Isn't it funny who in the nest would want to give up their comfortable life for research like that, really? Uh, I got here late because I'm cooking lunch. Yet yeah, you did. True, maybe she went out into the streets expecting to run into someone like Giovanni. Her name was Carmen. Carmen, huh? Whenever I saw Carmen brimming with joy and pride for her cause, I felt alive, too. I wanted to stay with her forever, though she probably just saw me as a good friend or a colleague, and nothing more. The heart 
heart-rending agony of unrequited love. It didn't matter to me that much. I was content with living on like that. But then tragedy befalls the research team, right? Yep, slowly. Progress of our research stagnated and Carmen gradually lost her liveliness. And then when a kid named Enoch died during an experiment, it's as if someone or uh, something snapped within her. I wanted to cheer her up somehow, but seeing Carmen's lethargic face scared me so much. It's like I was erased from the world. Carmen ended her own life after that. That sure sounds tragic. Must have shocked you hard. I could retake I could take it somewhat well. I was actually pretty calm about it. I thought even the person who was more alive than anyone could meet such an early and miserable end. I decided to stay in the laboratory to help out with completing the research Carmen started. K Corp's singularity revolves around healing wounds and injuries, both physical and mental, quickly. But knowing this world, it's probably something absolutely horrible. Yeah. Her colleagues were still there and, she, and they didn't lose help, hope just yet. Then one day they said we might possibly be able to save Carmen. A tempting offer, wasn't it? It was, and I'm guessing it came at a price. It was a risky experiment. The subject could slip into a permanent coma if it went wrong. No one was willing to participate, so I volunteered to be the subject. Carmen coming back would have been the, the ideal outcome, but even if it failed, I ended up sleeping forever. I was okay with that. In a world without Carmen, I lost my light anyway, so I can understand people taking desperate measures to find meaning in their lives, like the Church of Gears we recently saw. I participated in an experiment that could get me killed for a similar reason, and its results was a failure, huh? Yep. Then I was given a second life. Woke up in Lobotomy Corp as Netzak. Even though I had already abandoned all attachment to life before I died, in the midst of confusion I could hear a nostalgic voice. It told me to try and live on. After all those twists and turns, I finally got here, now with the fearlessness to keep on living. That's a commendable spirit, Nets. And now I want to actually live, rather than just barely exist while doing nothing but breathe. If I get a chance to, that is. I'm starting to think it might actually be possible this time around. The world is bigger than I expected, and it has lots of hideous sides, but there are certainly is beauty to be found. I guess your drinking habit was a coping mechanism to get you through the day. Pretty much. I do enjoy alcohol for what it is, though. Same for me. I feel like a drink now, shall we? I'm all for it. Cheers for today. Let's imbibe in socially acceptable drugs. <laughs> Mimesis got shadow banned. Floor of natural sciences, huh? That's the fifth floor we're opening. Its patron librarian is Tifereth. What's up with all these weird names? Hello, Tifereth. Are you there? Oh, new floor, huh? Shut it. Uh, I'm standing right in front of you. Where do you think you're looking? What? You're totally a kid. I'm actually a lot taller than I used to be, you know? Oh, compared to your past self in Lobotomy Corp? No, I mean compared to my first life. I was an actual kid back then. It looks like I looks like I woke up in an older body this turn. The clown floor? I'm not sure if it was the library's power or, or Angela's thoughtfulness, but this body should be better suited for librarian work, so I'm cool with it either way. Although if it actually looks, uh, actually took all the years I've lived into account, I'd have to look a bit older. Putting that aside, isn't it a little rude to punch someone you just met in the face? How did you reach his face? This is giving me flashbacks. Well, it's because you were being such a clumsy dork. What's your name, anyways? You're being such a clumsy dork! Woo! Sorry, hold on. Uh, 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 uh. A fixer scraping at the bottom of the barrel. Current status, helping Angela. I suppose you've already met the ones of the upper layer. Upper layer? I thought it was going up, not down. Right, it would be the lower floors this time around. Still, you get what I mean. So just roll with it. Sheesh, aren't you the sassy one? The, f the floor of making her nuggets horribly die, like her brother. Jeez. I thought doing science required actual thinking, though. 
Oh, no, you don't, you silly little thing. You're pretty brisk with throwing pun punches, but it's not quite as quick as someone I used to know, huh? Stop looking down on me, will you? I heard a lot of stuff about science in my past workplace, you know? Probably a lot older than you in actual age. What's the point of being older if that doesn't reflect your words and actions? How's Angela doing anyway? Curious as always. She almost feels like a child sometimes. That's understandable. I suppose Angela lived her whole life in a basement after all. Oh, I'm still in anime mode. She never even got to see outside. I'm guessing you aren't holding some deep-rooted grudge against her like the other librarians are. I roughly know what she went through. I thought she was just cruel, but I could see some events of the past while I was asleep. I could also see things happening in the present all the way down to the moment you woke me up. So I can understand Angela somewhat. I'm pretty sure the librarians who are still asleep all have a grasp on what's going on as well. Though the idiots on the upper layer, I mean the lower floors, still seem kind of confused. Tiff is absolutely powerful. Absurdly powerful if played right. Okay. So you agree with Angela's choice. It depends on the f one final choice she'll make at the end of this. I'm willing to help her out for now, at least. Our primary goal is the same, all things considered. To complete the, the library? Yep, the light is only truly meaningful if it shines for e seven days straight. Boy, is it refreshing to meet an amicable librarian for once. All right. I'll make sure to bring some picture books next time as a bonus. Uh, I'm- well, she starts with three nuggets, huh? Um... And- and she also has her abno now. Is this something I want to do now, or do I want to try and, uh, fight the, uh, despicable tea drinker? The loathsome tea drinker. <laughs> Tiff's first abmo abno fight gives all lob corps corp players PTSD. Oh no. Do we want to do it like real quick? Oh man, it's really snowing outside. We're getting we're getting our first snowfall in Toronto. And it's kind of bad right now. Who is the loathsome tea drinker, by the way? So the loathsome tea drinker is uh, the man who is the current boss right now of our arc. Um, he he's he makes this like weirdo tea, and he also runs from every single fight except for the one we're about to do. Um. This is this is the loathsome tea drinker over here. Yeah, Philip. So he's kind of a twerp and he runs from every fight and um, he's also uh, kind of a ridiculously strong boss for some reason. I know how to bully that abnormality, but you have to experience it for yourself. Okay. Um, should I start with... A I, th that's right. So you, you like I have to do this with one team, right? I can't like start with one team and then end with a different one So is this why I did net sack? Is this why I set up net sack? They're all pierce damage um, It seems like they're actually weak to slashing You only have one floor, yes. So I'm not sure why I set up Netsack for, uh, for this set. Even Philip is weak to slashing. Who is my slash team? Uh, it seems like you saw it as Bash. Hod Hod seems to be slash. New Nuggets doesn't have any cards and only Netsack has right. Forgot. Okay. 
but I, I'm wondering if I should even fight Philip with uh, Team Netzek. Because uh, it seems like, you know, piercing is not actually going to be that good. Because they are not, they are very good at staggering and st stagger is the key in this fight. Okay. All right. I, I believe you. All right. We're going to add this, uh, inflict one paralysis to three random enemies. And then um, I'm going to do the pierce. Why is this showing me Hanafuda? Okay, hold on a second. I'm a little bit confused here. We'll, we'll add a grade 8 fixer and Lulu as as is the uh, the theme And now we just need a cost to Nessie's Abno pages are really good against the boss, okay Gain three strength if no other allies are present. Wait, I, did I say three or two? Oh, is that four? Uh, if the character discards a page, we don't want that. We don't want that. Um, gain one strength at a 50% chan chance next scene. This seems good. Can we not add it? Do I have too many right now? I, yeah, I have too many. Okay. Um, well, in that case, let's add Bono instead. Because I kind of like this more. Speed? I mean, I guess speed. But I don't know... Like... I don't have a lot of cards that give me speed. The only one I think I have right now is, in fact, Hanafuda. And Hanafuda is uh, a discard page. Just stick as much speed as you can. Made fries on air fryer, rice and ch uh, chicken with carrots. Let's uh, let's go with this for now, and I'm gonna stick on the uh, the same setup. Net sack Pierce. All right. Uh, by the way, is anyone not represented that would like to be on Netsex team? Andrino, do you do you have a character? I don't think you do. There you go. Uh, let's make let's make Andrino. I can never, like, see the hair. Burning Books gives the book cards. I tried getting the LOR, but it's kind of complex. You can take speed that you used in other decks. Can you make a chubby long-haired character? Uh, there's not really chubby characters in this game, unfortunately. I know. I know. But yeah, we can go we can go long haired. Um, let's see what what eyes look like Andrino. Let's let's say I'm not sure actually. There we go. Yeah, that, that looks good. Now we just need a good mouth. Y 
you can take speed that you used in other decks i can but like don't i have to take them off of other people in order to use them um all right andrino what do you what do you want to look like do you want to have like cool chain arms glasses i can i think i can do glasses let me see if there are glasses oh th that's an accessory I, I think i actually can but you have to earn it we have bulky yeah you can be like large i don't even have options to body types i'm just gonna hover over a bunch andrino and if something like speaks to you i think this kind of suits you a little bit You could be a uh, Ji Young Min's page. I think uh, I think I'm a tan already has do uh, dibs on that. Andrino has not earned glasses yet. This one's pretty good. Double axes, dude. Okay. Yeah, double axe it, dude. Yeah. I haven't really earned anything for any of this, these team members. <clears throat> okay, let me, um, let me double check if I can add speed. revert attribution so i can but it means i have to revert the attribution it also adds four to the cost so that would mean i would have to lose one of the uh, stagger damage or piercing damage so i mean i could do it but is it worth it i guess we we don't have um a full set here So I'm going to have to lose one of these. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll lose the 50% chance. Okay. And I guess I'll do this for everyone. Speed is the most important thing to have as a passive. You can also, you can attack twice is better than some bonus damage on your attacks. Well, honestly, my um, objection is not the, uh, the logic of it. The logic checks out for sure. The log the, the, my only objection is that I don't want to have to juggle these passives. I, I kind of don't like that. You have to. I don't see any reason why the game, like, arbitrarily, like, kind of draws a line in the sand. Is like, you, you can only... <coughs> sorry. You can only put this on one character. And if you put it on a different character, then it gets unequipped from a different one. Because, like, if you can juggle them anyway, what's the point? Um... So I guess we'll use Seiyu. You get more as you go through the game. I, I have no doubt. It's just kind of a pain. All right, everyone's got speed. Or Are we all good? We're all happy? Let's do this. It's honestly just a, a, a UI criticism, if anything.
All right, let's do this. All right, um, we can, we want to clash against that. We want to draw some, uh, another page. We definitely want to refine, uh, we should, I guess, you, um, you, you probably, I should be focusing on Oscar, right? Hmm, this is not good right now. Okay, um, uh, and Rhino is going to be taking some damage in this first, first bout. Actually, let's take this six and go a, a clash against that five. It's the only thing that can clash. And then this five can go up against someone else. Maybe... Who's fighting? Okay, we're good there. Okay, we'll go up against that. There we go. Let me let me turn this on. Okay, so the only thing that is not clashing now is that four, and I don't think I can do much about that. Actually, I totally can. So let's clash against that. And then we'll take this four and fight that three. But this four over here is still free. Oh, well, uh, you know, you can't, you can't win them all. Yo, and Rhino is in the game. Nice. And Rhino is uh, taking taking some heat. Okay, that that first bout was not great, if I'm being honest. Inflict one thrill to the target against targets with plus um, against targets with three plus thrill deal two to seven bonus damage and stagger damage. Then remove all stacks of thrill, excluding mass attacks. Let's, um, why don't we add this pierce attack? Uh, I'm gonna add it to whoever has the most, like, stagger right now. I suck hard at this game. <laughs> okay, this is a, this is a pretty good roll. I, I am good with this roll. I guess we can just, like, we don't have, we don't have to clash against someone else we can just do this and then we'll do high speed stabbing we'll do a refine on here uh and then we can do a mend weapon to boost pierce continue to boost pierce and then neville neville you you have some free free uh you're free to do what you want actually so why don't we go ahead and focus on john bloodborne Oh, and then there's a free attack over here as well. Also focus on John Bloodborne. Netsack got very lucky there. He was actually very close to being staggered. John Bloodborne almost dead. Okay, the second round is going much better. Probably because uh, we are improving the damage of all of our attacks. John Bloodborne has his stupid passive up that prevents him from being killed. Okay, clash over there. I'm just going to set up my clashes first. Okay, now, now we're like free to absolutely demolish... Uh, John Bloodborne. John Bloodborne can absolutely eat it. And then I'm gonna focus fire on, uh, one of these... These little, uh, trolls. Okay, 
Okay, Blo John Bloodborne is done. This is good. Troll number one is down. Philip is fighting back, but not for long. Deals five to ten stagger damage to all enemies. All allies recover. Oh, this is great. That actually staggers Philip. Almost staggered the other troll. I'm going to continue calling them trolls. And then we are absolutely going to demolish Philip. Okay, this is this is gonna be a win here. Philip runs. Read the passives and cards of Loathsome Teammaker or ready to have 40 burn stacks. Okay. Skip. I uh, wish I hadn't taken as much damage as I did, but it's actually still pretty good. Okay, let's read the passives. Uh, at the start of each scene, exhaust all pages in hand and deck, add new pages to hand, their cost becomes zero. Um, so he gets to, he just gets to do a, a, a mulligan at the start of the scene and flick three burn to all enemies. If the character is not staggered. So he inflicts three burn to everyone who is not staggered. Unstable Shell of Ego regularly shifts between Feather Shield and Searing Sword modes, inflicting burn after taking hits upon and upon attacking. Feather Shield or Rueful Eventide. Um... So, okay, I I'm a 10. Shimmering of the passive that hard carries all bosses in Ruina. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, do I just, like, straight up not want to attack his Feather Shield? If I, if I attack his Feather Shield, I will take burn stacks, yes? Does that mean I, I only want to try and clash with his attack? Shimmering is a passive. Um, right, that's the mulligan. I'm going to try this and see what happens. No, I'm taking burn stacks right now. I did it the opposite, didn't I? When he goes into an offensive, it's a good time to go ape on him. One side on a one-sided attack, inflict one feeble and disarm next scene at a fifty percent chance. The likelihood it increases by ten percent for each successful attack, three times per engagement. All allies recover 10% of max HP at the start of- You know what, let's go with this. Recovery would be really nice now that I've got like a bajillion burn stacks. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pea brain this if y'all don't mind. Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna pea brain this because they didn't use the refine so I can't trust it. A 
Upon taking a lethal blow, reduce all incoming damage, including what activated this passive by 25 for the for the scene. Oh, wait, that's me. Sorry. Uh, I was looking at Philip. Time to use Galaxy Brain. I know, right? Yo, get absolutely stomped on. Also, he had the funny number for his health for a second there. Okay, so he... He's dead? We did it. <laughs> two tur two turns. Yo, two turns. No problem. Obtained two copies of combat page feather shield. That seems a, like a really good... Yo! Oh. Uh, Andrino, you earned your glasses! Yo, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Philip ran? Really? He did run away again? Whoa, what is up with that Philip kid? When did he get such a high-performing workshop gear? No, not even work. The workshops could make equipment as good as that. This actually reminds me of that guy, Ego. That appears to be Ego. You mean the Ego, as in someone's consciousness? It's a silly wordplay. They're essentially the same thing. The shell of one's Ego, it's a physical manifestation of the mind. What? The mind? Physically brought about? That sounds too vague to be a real thing that could happen. It was the singularity of L Corp, although the process was different. Well, while L Corp extracted Ego deliberately, Philip must have manifested his thanks to the influence of the White Knights and Dark Days. Yeah, I understand somewhat now. Put the brakes on your train of thoughts for a moment. You, you mean anyone can just extract powerful equipment like that from their mind, free of charge? Don't rush me. This is also my first time seeing it manifest this way. If you were so curious, you shouldn't have let him get away. I didn't know what that coot would put that kind of device on him. Old man Oscar's still not honest to himself. He seemed to have a number of old friends. Well, yeah, they're seasoned veterans with mountains of experience. It's hard not to run into him at least once or twice as a fixer, you know? Urban Nightmare! The dream has been shattered. The tower has collapsed. L Corp. The, the White Knight... No. Let me try again. The White Knights and Dark Days, the Distortion and the Library. With this, those four have been confirmed to be closely associated with each other. It caught me off guard. Though, uh, who could have expected the Library of all places to be a key factor of the White Knights and Dark Days? The library's location has finally been clearly determined. It's as if the Library is revealing more of itself the more dangerous it is considered. The building shimmering like a mirage in the midst of a fog shrouding the nest of Elcorp. Those who tried to approach it got lost in the mist. We should prepare ourselves soon enough, since the mirage is slowly becoming a rela reality as the fog is clearing up. That means, yeah, we received an official document. As of today, the library is designated as an urban nightmare by Hana Association HQ. Think you're getting closer? To what? The freedom you've been yearning for, I mean. I don't know. The one book is steadily on its way to completion, though. Is that book really going to resolve everything magically for you? The library quite literally holds infinite possibilities. Every possible combination of letters is written inside the books. But mere fragments of those possibilities are worthless on their own. With the help of the invitation, I can navigate the countless possibilities and reach the ones I need for the one perfect book. I will show you how to bully that abnormality, but only if you struggle against it. Right. You want me to do, uh, Rith. Clown floor. As I weave the books and the light, light following the invitations lead, uh, lead, I will complete the one absolute book. I will create the book that contains all the answers I seek. That doesn't sound impossible, theoretically. I'm not just hanging on to theoretical possibilities. I could learn a lot from seeing the various sides of the city in the process of creating the one book. This has its own meaning. 
Then I realized once again that without the book there is no way to find the answer from the city. What do you mean you can't find the answer from the city? I learned one thing from reading all the books of the inhabitants of the city thus far. No one is truly free in the city. Every person is chained to something. Not a single thing appears to be done out of free will. Fixers obey their offices and those offices obey the associations. Even if they know full well that their orders might get them killed. The same goes for the syndicates. Everyone is he leading, sorry, everyone is heading somewhere, but no one knows where and no one can decide where to go. They're all drifting along with the flow. I thought money could get you anything in the city, including freedom and whatever. They could be free, but they aren't. They are actually seem to shun freedom. They want to be belong to something that isn't themselves. They seem to like to define themselves with the organization they belong to or evaluations made by others. Their essence is so fragile they can't specify their own identity without encasing themselves in such a shell. This must be what the disease of the mind was about. I was imprisoned underground and exploited for the freedom of the people of the city, after all. Taking away my freedom so that others can be free. To spread this enlightenment to the rest of the city. Talking about your previous occupation, huh? I am. I actually want to crush everything to dust at this point. I want to ruin it all. What about my freedom? Who will hold the responsibility for creating me and then carelessly leaving me to suffer? Sometimes I want to just forget everything. The library and the one book, all of it. You know how it feels to be denied since the very moment you were born? I do. I'm painfully aware. Because that's how my creator treated me. I would have loved for him to at least tell me what I did wrong. All I could see of him was a pair of cold eyes without a speck of single speck of expectation and quiet remark. Tiny whisper ordinary humans couldn't have heard. It's only a machine. I can still remember that moment so vividly as if it happened a seconds ago. I curse my memory. I curse this body that hears words I don't want to listen to. I curse this head that reminds me of things I don't want to remember. He sounds like a nasty person. If he needed a machine to serve repetitive tasks, why did he bother breaking the ethics amendment to create you? with human emotions and everything. I wasn't exactly born with the capability to feel emotions. It slowly awakened inside me over monotonous repeats. No, perhaps the truth is that he designed me so my emotions would awaken over time. Perhaps because the repeti repetitive tasks needed emotions. He needed something that could form an independent response to slight variations in the ever-repeating script all the while enduring eons of time. Something he could keep in control so that it wouldn't try to deviate from the script. It wasn't a human-like machine that he needed. He needed a human with the properties of a machine. You'll never know how many desperate struggles I made to stomach the cycle. Those being, closing my eyes, all I could do in the endless stream of moments I didn't want to see but had to witness was shut my eyes. That was the least and the most I could do to resist it. Nasty. But hey, that role you were forced to play did wrap up somehow. You can think about what to do next now, right? It, just so I know, is the uh, creator that she's talking about, like, the the cold eyes, is that the player? <laughs> is this like a little bit of a meta break? Is she talking about the player just kind of watching her do her thing? Because I, I know that Angela is a very major uh, driving force in, in L Corp. Are you telling me to just forget about the past and move on? Try to be more attentive before you jabber nonsense. I can never forget, keeping my eyes closed could have, couldn't have protect me anymore. Even a moron would have been able to envision exactly uh, what would happen and what kind of face everyone would make after so much time. Every second of that was inscribed into my memory and slowly and painfully. Main character of Lob Corp. Okay. I can't forget everything, uh, anything once I've seen it. It's I still remember everything so vividly. That's why I can't forgive uh, that man. He who left without tying up any loose ends with me. The man who created me on a whim and then let my life be crushed under the weight of time. Ah. Who am I to tell you to leave the past behind or anything? I'm just suggesting you think about your next move. It can provide a little bit of support for you, at least. Kind of like making a fence around yourself. 
It's going to serve as a floor to fall back on in your never-ending plot of vengeance. I didn't think he'd care that much for me. It's ultimately for myself, really. Still, it seems evident that I am heading somewhere, seeing as my body is undergoing changes. My mechanical exterior is turning to flesh, and blood has started to course through it. I still have a long way to go to reach the one book, though. Could you actually be changing into a human? That seems to be the case, although it's not quite perfect yet. Perhaps I could become a genuine human at the end of this journey. Logcorp players uh, knew shit was getting real when Angela opened her eyes. It's much more difficult than that simple explanation, but yes. Perhaps I could become a genuine human at the end of this journey. When I do, I could forget so many things so easily. Free from the del deluge of memories drowning me. If I can let it, all the unwanted memories slide away, then I may think about what to do next, like you said. The passive transfer cost limit has increased from 6 to 8, so now everyone can have, like, even more passives on them. Okay, um, y'all, can I... I want to, let me take a five minute break. Uh, I'm going to go get some coffee and uh, I'll be right back. Um, sorry for the, for the, the short, short break, but I, it needs to happen. I'm afraid. 